All right, fantastic. So thank you all so much for joining us and thank you all so much who maybe didn't join us today but are watching the recording. We appreciate it either way. Um, so today we have a wonderful presentation of the st uh, gender studies major at Stan State. Uh, that's gonna take up the bulk of the presentation time but we're also gonna be discussing the WOW program Really quick before I pass it over to Betsy, who's going to be presenting on gender studies, I do want to have a, introduce myself. If you don't know me, my name is Martin Medina. I am with the WOW program, which stands for Warriors on the Way. Uh, I actually serve the students at Merced College. Uh, also, I want to have the chance to introduce my colleague, um, Callie. Go ahead and say a few words to the crowd at home. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Callie. Um, like Martin had mentioned, I also work in the WOW program. So I am the admissions counselor for students at Modesto Junior College. Um, yeah, welcome. And once again, just as a reminder, we will be recording today's session anytime throughout. If you have any questions, feel free just to drop them in the chat um, and then we can answer them at the, o, uh, at the end or as we go, however, Betsy, you'd like to do it. Uh, so without further ado, I will go ahead and give you the platform. Let me double check to make sure you are a co-host so you can share your screen if needed. Make me co-host, perfect. And we are all set, the floor is yours, thank you. Great, it's fantastic to be here. Hi again, my name is Betsy Udy. I'm the director of the Gender Studies Program at Stan State. Uh, the Gender Studies Program has existed since the, the mid 1980s. Um, and we officially got a major in 2006, I believe it was. Um, and um, we have a major and a minor and a social sciences concentration. Um, and our major and minor uh, are, are ones that you can uh, complete with only upper division units. Um, so if you haven't had an opportunity to take gender-based courses um, in your lower division courses in the community college, that's okay. You can still complete the degree. Um, I'm going to do a screen share and share some um, information about the, the program. I've placed in the chat links to several different documents, including um, a, a PDF of the um, excuse me, a PDF of the, the presentation, so that you have that information if you want it. Uh, but you do not have to download any of that information if you don't want to. All of the information about the major and the minor are available on the um, catalog pages for the university and also on the gender studies homepage. Um, so you have lots of different ways that you can interact with um, the university materials. Um, so I'm going to do a, a PowerPoint share with you and get this in our presentation view. All right, so you have here my contact information. I do use she, her, or they, them um, pronouns. Uh, and what gender studies is about is exploring issues of sex and gender and gender identity and gender expression and sexual orientation and romantic orientation. And um, this, this graphic sort of shows that we're, we're addressing issues of, you know, how people make sense of all different ways in which issues of sex, gender, and sexuality influence their personal lives, but also how those are experienced through institutions, through social structures, uh, and, and across all disciplines. We have courses that are cross-listed with 12 different departments on campus um, because there are ways in which gender issues, sexuality issues are components of every different discipline, every different aspect of our lives. Um, and our work is grounded in feminist theories, masculinity theories, queer and LGBT theories, as well as trans theories and, and particular research methods that are attached to all of those different theories. Uh, so the gender studies major gives students an interdisciplinary liberal arts education that can help in a whole lot of different kinds of careers and also help you in your daily life in families as well as um, helping out in um, any kind of activities you do in communities through volunteer work, through civic engagement, voting, those kinds of things. So gender studies is very much like a history major or philosophy major, an English major, that it doesn't prepare you for a particular career like nursing or um, accounting, um, but it gives you this broad background um, in a variety of different ways of thinking um, and, and skill areas that help sort of prepare you for a wide range of different kinds of careers. One of the things we know about 
um, is that you know most people switch their careers five or six times in their adult livelihood, livelihoods. And we also know that you know about 40% of the jobs that currently exist didn't exist 20 years ago because of the change in technologies, some things going out of favor, some things going into favor. We know that there's a lot of, of um, diversity in the ways that people's lives unfold. And so part of what a liberal arts education does um, with general education courses, breadth requirements, as well as your major, um, tries to develop in you habits of mind, ways of thinking about problems, learning how to engage in critical thinking, in writing, in reflection, in communication, a lot of different kinds of skills that can be adapted to any kind of new work environment that you go into. And, and so one of the goals in gender studies is really to provide you with a lot of skills and knowledge that prepare you for a variety of careers, as well as some expertise around some areas, particularly around sex, gender, and sexuality. So we look at issues of gender and sexual orientation and gender identity and expression, how they've been influenced by institutions, like the social structures we have, schools, the media, um, criminal justice systems, politics, um, and how those have been influenced um, by all sorts of other kinds of things. What are our political and cultural practices? What kind of scientific and technological advancements do we have? How is artistic expression part of this? What are the different kinds of environments that influence our lives? Um, and you're gonna look, this is a key component of, of gender studies, is evaluating the intersections of our identities with other categories like race and ethnicity and economic class and age and able-bodiedness, religion, nationality, geographic locations. If you take gender studies courses, if you have an emphasis in gender studies in one way or another, intersectionality is going to be that term that's going to be drilled into your head. Uh, we can't just say all women this, all men that, all gay people this. It all depends upon a variety of other kinds of experiences and characteristics. If you are a, a black gay man, you're going to have a different life experience than a lesbian Chicana, right? It's going to be a different life experience. Um, if you are somebody who is, you know, 19 years old, um, you are going to have a different experience as, as a queer youth than somebody who's 70 years old now, who when they were growing up, being gay was actually considered a mental disorder and it was illegal to engage in um, same-sex sexual practices in most states in the United States. Different life experiences, different time frames affect the ways in which people experience their um, sexual orientation, their gender identity, their gender expression. And so everything that we do in this program looks at these international intersectional kind of components. We acknowledge that like most disciplines in the United States, a lot of the early history of our programs was tied to a lot of white middle class kinds of perspectives on things. And, and that is not where the field is now. And we will talk a lot in our classes about the development of those changes and how we've become much more intersectional and inclusionary. Um, you're also gonna develop, you know, graduate from our courses with strong critical thinking skills, lots of experience with oral and written communication. We make you talk a lot in the classes. We make you, you know, do short reflection writings on things. We help you uh, write research papers or blog posts or news articles or presentations. We help you develop some of those written um, and oral communication skills. Uh, you're going to be doing some community-based um, projects and research projects. So we have service learning attached to many of our classes. Um, you're going to be working with diverse teams in part because the students in our classes are ex incredibly diverse, but we're going to also, because we're an interdisciplinary program, there are going to be people in your classes that are from all the different majors on campus and all the different minors on campus. And so you're going to have a lot of people with different ideological perspectives coming in, in addition to the diversity of their personal identities. Um, and then appreciation for civic engagement is really talking about the recognition that what you learn in our classes applies to things that you can do in the real world. It can affect the way that you choose to vote. It can affect the kinds of volunteer work that you do. I'd also note that our campus is just starting to get involved with a, a program called COIL um, that I'm helping to spearhead. And COIL is a project where um, Stan State courses are going to be partnering with um, courses in other countries. And so that you could be taking a class with me and one of our assignments will be done alongside students in Chile, in Brazil, in Mexico, in Saskatchewan. Uh, and so that you'll also be developing some inter 
national and intercultural exchanges um, around course assignments um, to show how the work that we're doing in our own classes is connecting to the ways that people experience lives in other countries. There are three academic choices um, for gender studies. You can do the major, the minor, or the social sciences concentration. All of them can be completed in a fully online format or in a hybrid format with some of your courses um, occurring online, some of your courses having a face-to-face -face component. Some of your courses might also be hybrid courses themselves that part of the class is face-to-face -face um, in person and part of it is online. Um, Regardless of the courses that you're taking, um, we have some program learning outcomes and you'll find that every department on campus has a set of program learning outcomes, core competencies or knowledges that they want students to graduate with. Um, within gender studies, there's um, some basic theory and methods that you'll understand. Again, this concept of intersectionality, there'll be a, an emphasis on activist, activism, resistance and social justice, a strong component there about how what we learn is used to change the world and how the work of social justice activists have actually influenced the academic discipline of gender studies. Um, much like ethnic studies, gender studies originated in the community on the streets and then moved into higher education. Um, and so we, we always see a connection between applied activist work and, and social justice aims. We're not just learning about these issues, we're trying to learn about these issues so that we can improve the world, make people's lives better. Our courses do have global and transnational components to them. Uh, not every course is global and transnational, but a, a majority of them include um, focus on those. Cultural Productions talks about the ways in which um, Gender and sexuality issues are especially addressed through, through the arts and humanities. And so we have um, courses and components of courses that talk about popular culture, about music and film and art and dance and, and um, theater and all sorts of different ways in which our social cultural um, activities uh, help shape our understanding of sex and gen gender issues. Um, and then finally, skills and competencies. These are uh, reinforcement of a lot of the skills and competencies that you've developed in your lower division general education, oral communication, written communication, um, presentation skills, quantitative reasoning, information literacy. So we will be building upon those uh, to reinforce what you've learned through your general education program. The major um, is 30 units. 24 of those have to be at um, the upper division level, 3,000 or 4,000 level. That is a, a CSU expectation. Um, and so that means that you can transfer in six lower division units into the major itself. If you've taken more than six units of gender-based courses, you can use those courses to count towards some of the um, content-based requirements in the major, but you still have to have 24 units of upper division coursework. So we'll work with you on how to use the mix of courses that you've taken to satisfy the program requirements. Uh, the bachelor's in gender studies, because it's only 30 units and it doesn't require any specific lower division courses, you can complete the gender studies bachelor degree and all of the rest of the um, requirements for university graduation with any completed ADT from a community college. So although there's specific notations that, you know, the social justice studies, psychology, English, communication studies, history, that those lead into a gender studies major, uh, those are named because there are a lot of those courses uh, offered in the community college in those areas. But any ADT you have, you can within 60 units finish a degree at Stan State. And in most cases, you can finish it within 50 units. So if you're coming in with more than um, 60 undergraduate uh, units transferred in, because you can transfer up to 72, many students are, are graduating even with just 50 units um, transferred from a community college. So some are even able to complete the degree in three semesters and not four, depending on how many units you can take in a particular term. Uh, so the core of the major includes um, a course on society and gender, a basic introduction to the different ways in which um, gender is experienced within society. And then there's a research class, a theory class. Our course on studies and activism um, is a international based course looking at the different ways in which activism occurs. Um, when it's offered, it has special topics. Uh, one of the special topics that we 
often teach is LGBT activism in a global setting. This semester I'm teaching a course on um, gender-based environmental activism and the way that environmental activism um, is addressing especially women's issues, masculinity issues, and um, the experiences of LGBT people. Um, and so that topic changes every semester. Um, and then we also have a portfolio capstone course, which is a one unit course where you sort of compile the work that you've done in your, your coursework and sort of show how you've achieved the program learning outcomes and, and where you, you tend to, where you wanna take what you've learned um, to the next level, whether you're going into work, um, graduate program, other kinds of things. Um, you'll take one course that attaches to historical perspectives. Many of you may be taking a, um, like a women's history course at, at your university now, that would count toward that, but we do have lower and upper division courses at Stan State that fulfill that. Um, we ensure that in addition to the studies and activism course, that you take another course that has a, a global or US ethnic diversity emphasis. And then you take, you have a concentration that's 12 units and then any additional electives you need to reach the 30 units. There are three different concentrations, one that's in history, society, and inequality, one that's, uh, and that's, you know, social systems, a lot of the courses based around history and um, political science, social sciences, um, ethnic studies. Uh, the cultural ideology and representation is one that's particularly the arts and humanities, so a lot of our English classes, art classes, um, a couple of the ethnic studies classes are also in that area. And then our ethnicity, nationality, and sexuality uh, has, has courses around all of the different disciplines, but especially ones that have a global emphasis and LGBT emphasis or um, center around issues of ethnic and national diversity. To give you a sense of our curriculum, here's some of our, our, the topics of our core courses. So we have ones around um, activism around LGBT issues. Um, in fact, we have a brand new transgender issues and identities course that'll start in fall. Uh, we have three courses in the curriculum that focus on issues of environment and sustainability, the women's lives and sustainable happiness, gender environment and sustainability, and then that gender-based environmental activism course. Uh, we have several that are tied to uh, film and popular culture, children's literature, uh, so we, we run a gamut of things. The women's spirituality class is also very popular. You'll see that several of these courses um, count toward upper division general education credit so that you can take courses in the major that also count to your upper division general education in areas C and D. We don't have any in the natural sciences, but we do in the arts and humanities and the social sciences. Our elective courses um, are courses that are traditionally cross-listed with other programs. You'll see um, cross-listed courses here with ethnic studies and sociology and psychology in history, art, communication studies, uh, English, I'm not sure I said that, philosophy. So a whole variety of different programs on campus um, that again, give you global issues, give you um, social science issues, give you arts and humanities issues. Um, just double checking the chat, making sure if there's anything that people need. Okay, uh, the minor is only 18 units. Traditionally, Stan State minors are somewhere between 18 and 21 units. Um, in the minor, you take the society and gender class, either the research class or the theory class. Uh, research is offered every fall and theory is offered every spring. So depending on um, what fits your schedule and interests, that um, can work out. And then you take six units of core gender studies courses from that first list of classes I showed you, and then any other six units of electives. Uh, and if you already have some courses that you've taken um, at the community college, those can count toward either the core or the electives, depending upon um, how the subject matter covers the same content as the courses we offer in our program. Um, but 18 units, it's, it's pretty easy to, to get through. Uh, the society and gender class that's listed here is offered every term, fall, spring, winter, and summer, so that there are always options for taking that course. And then if you're interested in the social sciences major, the social sciences concentration has you choose from among three different degrees, um, disciplines as part of your program. You take 12 units in one discipline and nine units in the other two. Um, and for our program, the, again, the society and gender course is the mandatory course. And then you take your other two to three classes from among 20 courses that are in our electives list. Because this is a social sciences emphasis, um, 
some of our courses don't count. So if it's if it's a focus on you know children's literature, that's an arts and humanities class, and so you can't count it toward the concentration. But but there are lots of courses that do. About twenty of the, the gender studies courses count in that social sciences emphasis. So I know that one of the major questions that folks have have is what do we do with a major in gender studies or a minor in gender studies? Uh, these are uh, the current jobs that uh, are. Stan State gender studies graduates have been um, working on in the last few years. Um, many of them are, are working in education as K-12 teachers. Quite a few of them have gotten master's degrees and are, and are lecturers um, at Stan State, at um, MJC, at Delta, uh, other places around the country. Uh, but they work in the medical professions, they work in human resources, they work um, in all sorts of areas of, of retail, lots of them working in social services agencies, a couple of even found, have founded nonprofit organizations. Um, and, and so they're all in all sorts of different places. Many of them end up working back at college campuses doing uh, jobs like uh, you know, Martin is doing, working with, with transfer programs, working in academic advising, working in residence life, doing things, um, working in student centers, um, LGBT centers. So there are lots of different kinds of roles that people can get, take on. Uh, I will say on the next slide, you know, what graduate degrees do people um, pursue? A lot of them go into the multiple subjects and single subjects credential programs. Uh, quite a lot um, each year apply into the Master of Social Work or Master in Marriage and Family Therapy um, programs. Uh, we've had many that have been at, in the Stan State um, English and History and Interdisciplinary Studies programs. Uh, so, you know, psychology, we have also had folks go into to theology um, to become clergy um, and counselors. Uh, we have two right now that are in the interdisciplinary humanities program at um, PhD program at UC Merced. Uh, the, the gentleman that was earlier um, posted um, has gotten an MSW at Stan State um, and is just about to start a PhD in sexual sexuality studies in San Francisco. So folks go in a lot of different directions. Um, you know, many of the jobs that people get straight out of undergrad uh, are great, but a lot of the uh, social sciences majors really benefit from a master's degree. Um, and, and so many of them do end up going into these kind of programs at a master's level. Um, and I wanted to show you a quick photo of, these are our, our five core faculty members in the gender studies program. So on there, on, on the left, uh, my, my background is in, um, my PhD is from Ohio State University in cultural studies. Uh, and I have a, an undergrad degree in psychology. I have three master's degrees, one in history, um, one in higher ed student affairs administration and one in online teaching. Um, in the center is my, my colleague, Tristan Cotton. He is a, an expert in transgender studies and, and masculinity studies. Um, he's taught um, in ethnic studies as well as in gender studies for many years. Um, and he also is the founding uh, owner of Transgress Press that um, publishes the works of transgender authors um, and just does some amazing work. In fact, some of our students have done internships with his press, um, which has been a really great way to, to learn a lot of new information um, and, and contribute to the growing understanding of transgender issues. On the right is Robin Baldridge. She teaches a lot of our courses related to um, queer studies and queer theory and our um, um, gender and ethnicity and children's literature uh, courses. Um, on the bottom left is Amy Castleman Hantalas, who teaches with us in ethnic studies. She's written a book on um, uh, violence against women in indigenous communities in California and some legal cases related to um, the different ways in which um, reservation law and US criminal law have allowed for the exploitation of, of women on um, reservations, in, especially in California, um, and does a lot of work with um, political um, and legal issues. She's um, completing a doctorate in um, sociology at um, Stanford University right now. And on the right there is Jeanette Keel, who has a master's in women's and gender studies and a PhD in uh, philosophy and women's spirituality. And she teaches our women's spirituality class, society and gender class, um, activism class, and probably will start um, teaching some of our pop culture courses. So we have a really great set of core faculty. And then we have 22 other faculty members um, who teach cross-listed courses with us.
Um, and then the, the last slide here just gives you some links to um, program resources, the Gender Studies website, um, an advising roadmap, and our catalog pages. So I'm going to stop sharing that basic information and open things up to some of your questions. So one is, what is the difference between a minor and a concentration? It's a fantastic question. And this applies to all degree programs on campus, not just gender studies. So a minor is a standalone academic degree program that shows up on your transcript as a supplement to your major. So your major is this usually 24 to, to 30 unit um, degree. And a minor is a separate identified degree program. You're allowed to um, cross count up to 49% of the units in your minor towards your major. Um, so that let's say that you're a history minor with a gender studies major, you could have um, eight units of history courses with a gender emphasis count toward both the minor and the major. Um, a concentration is a subfield within your major. And so it's part of your major. So in, um, in communication studies, you could emphasize around journalism or you could emphasize um, around, um, I forget what their other area is, but so it's a, it's a subfield within it. it shows an area of emphasis, area of expertise within the disciplinary major. So if you do a gender studies major, you'll pick a concentration in the history society of inequality or ethnicity, nationality and sexuality. And that's all completed within your 30 units. If you have a minor, that's going to be an additional degree program of, of you know, 18 units or so. For most students, if you have a low unit major like gender studies, um, you can still complete your minor, your major, and your GE courses all within that 60 units that you need to finish your degree at Stan State. Uh, if you have a high degree major, something like business that has almost no electives whatsoever in it, if you add a minor onto that, you're probably gonna to have to go above your 120 units in order to um, do the minor in addition to the major requirements. But the way that um, gender studies is designed, um, it is a low unit major. So there's actually a lot of opportunities to have a double major. Many of our students do have two majors um, or to have a major and a minor. Um, so, and yes, any student can, um, any major can have this as a minor. Um, and so you can do it as a minor, which is 18 units, or you can do it as a double major, 30 units and 30 units. If you're doing a double major, we definitely um, work with you to try to help you maximize the cross counting of, of courses or, or uh, give you substitutions or waivers for courses. So if you're, take, if you're a psychology major, let's say, the psychology major has three research courses that you end up taking between lower division and upper division courses. Because you're doing that, we will waive the gender studies research methods requirement so that you're not taking a fourth one of those. We'll count that in that, in that course list. Um, so that we'll do some things to try to help you, you know, streamline your progress to graduation while still having a good comprehensive set of courses that you're taking um, that, that reflect mastery in both fields that you're doing. Um, if you're doing a, a capstone course in psychology and the paper that you're writing is going to have a, you know, a focus on gender sexuality, we can count that as an elective in the gender studies program because you're really giving um, you know, concerted effort and thought to a gender-based issue. Or if you're doing an internship in one of our areas that could count toward the emphasis in the other one, we would double count those as well. Again, the university policy is anytime that you have a second major or a minor, you can count 49% of the coursework toward both degree programs, but there has to at least be 51% of that content that's unique in both directions. Um, and also paying attention to the fact that you can use your upper division general education courses in your major or minor if there's a relevant um, application there. We do encourage you, if you have flexibility in your schedule, to take some courses outside those disciplines because part of, you know, the fun and joy of being a student is learning some things that are outside your comfort zone and outside those areas of emphasis. So if you have flexibility in your schedule, certainly look at opportunities to take some things that might push you a little bit differently in new areas. Um, but if you want a double major, if you want to do a major and minor, we work really closely with you to find that best, best mix of courses to have you complete your degree on the timeline that makes sense for you. Um, I know that there's a lot of, of push for, um, you know, 
finishing up in two years or trying to do things you know quickly. For some students, that's a fantastic thing. For others, you know, going part time some of the time is really great. For some, you know, just taking nine or twelve units a term instead of fifteen is good. But others, if you like eighteen or twenty um, and are trying to get at fast, we'll talk to you about what your best timeline is, what your best best mix of courses are, the mix of synchronous courses, ones that are happening at the same time, whether in face-to-face -face or online formats or asynchronous courses where you're working at your own time frame, but you know, along still a pathway with other students in the class, we'll talk to you about the different modalities that work best for you. Um, there's a question, you know, is a major in psych with a minor in gender studies, will that work? Yeah, there are probably 10 or 12 students right now that are doing that exact thing, um, that are currently enrolled as psych majors with a gender studies minor. There is one course that's cross list between our um, programs, the Psychology of Women class that's offered online every fall and spring, usually between um, two to four sections of it between the fall and spring. Um, it's a really popular class, a really great, a really great course to take. You don't have to do it, um, but it does, the Psychology of Women counts as one of the um, elective choices within your sub concentrations in the, um, in the discipline and then can count toward um, an elective in the gender studies minor. Not seeing other questions. What other questions might people have or things that I can answer? Um, in addition, I know that um, we wanna share some information about the WOW program in general um, and maybe sharing some of that and then coming back to gender issues as people are thinking about it a little bit more. Yeah, we can, we can definitely do that. I do have, um, well, two questions. You answered one of them um, about, so I was wondering about the, uh, the COIL program that you're starting up. That sounds just awesome, phenomenal, super exciting. Uh, when, do you know, is there a planned start date for that? So um, there's a, a, a team of us that is um, participating in some national, international um, training and information sessions about that right now and going through uh, some workshops. We've put a um, proposal through to the um, Academic Affairs Division um, right now for some funding for uh, faculty development around this and student support around this and, and some coordinating efforts. And we'll probably find out in the next couple of weeks where we, where we stand with that funding. Um, but even without funding, um, we, can, we can do some good components of it anyway. And so this is known at COIL stands for Collaborative Online International Learning. And um, it creates these five to 10 week long joint experiences between um, a US-based campus and a non-US-based campus. And, um, and it's not just, you know, the professor from there coming and doing a lecture and stuff. It's really about students doing work collaboratively together, whether they're all doing it in the same language or doing it in different languages and then using translation programs to help in that communication. But it's really about, you know, team-based cooperative work across countries. Uh, and and it's, it's gonna be really fantastic. We've been talking to um, campuses in, in Africa, in Latin America, in South America, in um, Canada, uh, in Europe. We've, so we've already started making these connections and collaborations, looking at the different kinds of disciplines that we can, um, connect things to, we're really excited about the opportunities given how all of us students and faculty have gotten better at this online learning modality um, because of the pandemic. Um, we have a good infrastructure instead of skills that we can bring to this new mode of interaction with folks in other countries. Um, and it can certainly lead to interest and connections that might lead some of us to decide to do study abroad or other kinds of things um, to build upon those connections. But initially, it's just a really great way to have international experiences when we know that most of us don't have the ability to do international travel. But we also know that people really benefit from these kind of intercultural exchanges and opportunities and experiences. And so, um, you know, one of the things we want to do is share the Central Valley with the world because we think we've got a lot of really cool things to share here and really extraordinary students that can teach the world a whole lot of interesting things. So we're really excited about it. Um, and I expect that we might have one or two courses in fall that might be pulling this together, but I think by spring that we, we might see, you know, you know, 20 or so and, and continue to build that because it does take a little bit of time for the, the faculty to, to put those assignments together and get it pulled together. But we're hoping to start some some training for faculty over the summer and then even more in, in fall and spring this coming year. That is very exciting stuff. And to follow up kind of a follow up question. So 
is it mostly going to be U.S. campuses that host the classes or are other countries going to be allowed to host classes as well for, for students to join in? Uh, but I mean, so it's going to be collaborations between faculty. So I might find a faculty member um, at, you know, a university in Chile and the two of us will create a, a section of our courses that we will share together through Canvas, through um, other online means. Um, and some of it might be synchronous, some of it might be asynchronous. Um, and some of the, the campuses in other countries have been doing this longer than, than we have. And so some of them may be taking the lead on this. And sometimes we may be the ones that are, that are doing that lead and reaching out. For some faculty, they're gonna be building upon relationships with research partners that they've already had in the past. And for others, it's gonna be brand new kind of things. Some of it's gonna be completely close disciplinary ties. And for others, it might be more interdisciplinary that um, you know, a history class partners up with a communication studies class in another country because they can work together on creating a website around something. So you know, it could be, it could be a bits of anything. Um, but yeah, the kind of conversations we're already having with some of these other international partners, they're just amazing. I mean, the, there's just endless opportunities there. And the, and the, the issue right now is more to constrain ourselves as opposed to trying to jump into everything all at once. Uh, one of the things we have to keep in mind is that, you know, the United States doesn't work on the same academic schedule as everybody else, right? Um, we even know just even in California that we're all on different um, schedules, even with other CSUs and the community colleges. And so part of the decisions we have to make is what, what courses and components of courses fit with the schedules that um, the schools in these other countries are working on. So uh, yeah, it's endless possibilities of really amazing things. There are also opportunities to do exchanges with even campuses in other states. I'm actually talking to a, um, a campus in Florida right now about a component of one of my classes that we're gonna do cooperatively just between their campus in Florida and ours here because they have different issues, different student populations that they're working with and they want us to you know, tie up on some things. So it may even give us some, some different um, within US partnerships in addition to ones that we'll be doing across the world. That's super exciting too, just because I know if, if any of you have had the chance to travel to other states, when you tell people you're from California, it's always like, or are you from San Francisco or Los Angeles? You know, so it's, it's fun to get exchanges, but also highlight the Central Valley as well, because I think a lot of people don't have any idea what goes on between Stockton and Bakersfield, you know, it's just kind of, it's a California wash, right? But really, we got a life, we got a lot of, a lot of culture here in the Central Valley. So very fun stuff going on with all of that, all, all things gender studies, right? I also had one other question. Is there any currently outside of classes, are there any um, clubs or organizations going on on campus that students might be able to participate just in case like a, a business administration student comes off this or like, I don't know if I have time to minor, but I want to be a part of these discussions. How could they get involved in, in some of these opportunities as well? Yeah, so great question. So uh, there are, there's a, um, a group called Love Evolution that's a student club organization that's addressing uh, sexual orientation, gender identity issues. Uh, there's also a QTPOC uh, group that right now hasn't been very active during the, the pandemic, but is hoping to sort of pop up again that's um, especially related to uh, BIPOC, uh, Black, Indigenous, people of color, LGBT issues. Um, we also have an LGBTQ mentor program that um, connects students with a faculty or staff member on campus. And the opportunity there is either just one-on-one -on -one communication with those um, faculty and staff members, uh, and or you can participate in some group activities. We have some students who really don't want to be out and vocal and visible to everybody, but want somebody on campus that's a, a good connection and support and mentor. And for others, having a, a broader um, campus group um, is really helpful. And so that there are some campus-based activities, some you know home-based game nights and those kind of things when we're you know in a non-pandemic world. Um, and so a lot of different kind of opportunities there. Um, there's a uh, we we are sort of in a waning moment right now with um, our our. Um, feminist activism club on campus. They haven't been very active. The this, this student leadership hasn't been active in the pandemic, but they do intend in fall to sort of pop back up again. So that'll be there. Uh, and then we do a lot of collaborative programs with um, the Warrior Cross Cultural Center. And so you'll see lots of activities um, popping up through that group. 
Great, yeah. And we actually just had a, a presentation with the Warrior Cross Cultural Center yesterday. Was it yesterday already, Kelly? Yes. Okay, wow. <laughs> um, so I definitely check them out as well. They got a lot of fun stuff happening, a lot of ways to connect with um, just various people. So it's, it's just a good time. A lot of cool things happen at Stan State. So and let me interrupt for a minute. I also, I forgot to mention that uh, we've got a really great program that started this last year for men of color through the Warrior Cross Cultural Center. And that's a really important um, program for, for social purposes, um, as well as uh, really great at, at retention and, and um, support for, for students. And so want to make sure to do a shout out to that. Yeah, definitely go check out. I think there, if you're on the, the, the Instagram world or the social media, I think they're MSI underground uh, uh, underscore stand state. I think it's MSI underscore stand state for male success initiative. So really fun program. I know they're having a great time with their, their barber series uh, shop top. So a lot of fun stuff happening on campus overall. So before we transition to talking about the WOW program and kind of the admissions part of, <laughs> of the presentation, right? Does anyone have any, any final questions for Professor Batiero? I would just state that, you know, my, my first 11 years at Stan State, I um, lived in Stockton. I lived on a boat on the Delta and, and spent a lot of time on the, the Delta campus. Uh, so if any of you are you know, from Delta, I, I have some good familiarity with that. I've certainly, you know, done a lot of um, time on NJC, but now I'm living up in, in Twain Heart. So I'm up by Columbia College and, and happy to connect with folks around there as well. So uh, in addition to, you know, the normal sort of conversations we have with folks. We definitely have, um, you know, faculty living in many of our communities, including around Merced, um, and often can have an opportunity to visit with students on those physical campuses, as well as our Zoom connections with folks, um, you know, pandemic rules allowing us to do those kinds of things. Absolutely, well, thank you so much for the information. Uh, we really appreciate it. And like I said, this will be recorded. Um, so if you ever wanna rewatch this, that'll be available to you. So next, we are going to be transitioning into talking about WOW, which stands for the Warriors on the Way. Um, Professor Betsy Udi, I want to be respectful of your time. So if you didn't want to stick around for this part, it's not going to hurt my feelings just because I know you probably have a lot going on. If no, you no, do, no, I'm going to hang out and keep learning more about you all. I love this program. I'm so, so <laughs> excited that we have the Warriors on the Way program. I'm glad that you all are learning about it. Well, thank you. Yeah, the more the merrier. Here we go. Let me get this started here. And then Kelly, as I do this, if any questions pop up on the chat, if you could just answer them, that would be great. Um, and then any helpful links that I talk about or anything like that, uh, feel free to drop them in the chat as well. That goes for you as well, Professor. Um, anything that you mentioned today that you think the students might find helpful, we can definitely share with everybody. So let me minimize this here. Yeah, so now we're gonna be talking about the Warriors on the Way program or WOW for short, right? We're at Merced College, Modesto Junior College and San Joaquin Delta College. Um, so before we really get into talking about it, we like to not necessarily present a, a problem but go over a statistic, right? And that is students who enter community college and intend to earn a bachelor's degree nationally, only 14% do so within six years of starting college. I've always found this statistic to be pretty interesting because I, fall into this, right? As a former transfer student myself, it took me a long time to get out of community college, to get through uh, Fresno State where I eventually transferred to. So I always like to start off with asking why? What, what, what are some of the challenges students face? And the two things that we hear come up the most often from our talks to students is number one, affordable college options, right? Which Stan State, right? Recognized by Money Magazine as being the most bang for your buck universities, right? You get the same value degree, but at a lower cost to the students. I, I always like to highlight that. And you get to stay in the awesome Central Valley, which as we learned from Professor Betsy, right? It's cool and we got a lot of offerings here. Um, but also the bigger, the bigger thing that we try to address with the WOW program is unclear transfer pathways. I think back to when I was a transfer student and I think, well, when do I apply? How do I find the application, right? What's the difference between an associate's degree and an associate's degree for transfer? Right, what's an I get C versus a CSU transfer breath? These all these questions and concerns that kind of pop up that can frankly be a little overwhelming as transfer students. And so what the Warrior program does, the WOW program does, is we try to help students develop a sense of belonging to the warrior community, right? So make you feel like a warrior before you're already here. 
and really, really try to make a clear pathway for a smooth and successful transfer for all of our students. So for the WOW program, in order to be eligible, there's a few eligibility requirements, but they are pretty simple. The first one is sign up for the WOW program at least a year before your intended transfer term. This one kind of causes students to pause for a second, right? They're like, well, why? The reason is, and I don't think a lot of students always realize this, is you have to apply to come to Stan State and really any university well before you actually attend, right? So if you're planning on going next fall, so August 2022, you're actually gonna be applying in October of this year. So the reason we ask you to sign up for the WOW program so early is because we wanna have time to actually meet with you, right? Go over your requirements, make sure you're meeting all the prerequisites that you need. You're taking the classes that would benefit you the most um, and that you understand everything that's coming up with the transfer process. We also do ask that you intend to transfer and complete your bachelor's degree at Stan State. Obviously, this is the Warriors on the Way program, right? So we are hoping to get students to stand. Um, so that's really the goal. If you're still unsure about where you're gonna go and you're like, I'm trying to figure it out, I always tell students, come meet with us, right? Talk, I'm not a salesman, I'm not a salesperson, but I do wanna share with you what Stan State has to offer. Because, and then I'm also gonna encourage you to explore what else is going on, because ultimately you need to make the best choice for you. But in order to be part of the WOW program, you do have to be intending to transfer to Stan State. And then lastly, we do ask our students to be completing an associate's degree for transfer in one of the approved uh, ADT pathways. What that means is that there's a major deemed similar at the main campus. Um, and this goes back to um, time, right? Just making sure you get in and out the benefit of, of doing that. But I do want to highlight you have the opportunity to change your mind. And something we learned today with gender studies, if you wanna do that, any ADT sets you up usually for being able to complete that degree. If your goal is to do it in two academic years to be able to do that. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, this is just kind of ADT benefits, why we ask students to do it. It is designed for a seamless transfer to CSU. The thing I like about the ADT that I think sometimes students don't realize is it's designed for you to meet all your lower division education requirements. And for the most part, a lot of the pre-majors for whatever are prerequisites for whatever major you're going into. Um, there's also some other benefits, but I really wanna highlight this other point here. It's, it allows you to complete your bachelor's degree within 60 semester units after transferring. That's another big benefit. Um, you do have to make sure the ADT pathway is right for you. And by the way, I do also want to mention, because this gets brought up from time to time, if you go over the 60 semester units, we can use those up to a point, right? Up to 70 units towards the 120 you need to graduate. So just keep that in mind. However, once you go up that, over that 70 units, you can use those to meet requirements. However, they're not necessarily going to be counted towards the 120 needed for your bachelor's degree. And then of course, the last ADT benefit is it does make you eligible for the California Promise at Stan State. So California Promise program is a little bit different uh, than the WOW, right? It's its own thing. But the reason I like to highlight it is because one of the questions I get most often is, when do I get to meet with my general counselor at Stan State and make my ed plan, my academic plan? Well, at Stan State, it works a little bit different, right? We don't really have general counselors, we have faculty advisors. So for those of you who may be going into gender studies or, or, or whatever you're majoring in, you're actually gonna meet with your faculty to, to have that advising. However, with the California Promise, if you go into a major deem similar, you can also get extra help on this front. They'll give you a dedicated program advisor to help you come up with a personalized academic plan. And they'll also give you a former priority registration on the second pass, it's kind of how that works. In order to be eligible for this program, Students must have uh, completed an ADT, right? Which you, you'll be doing as a part of the WOW program. Complete 30 units per academic year. And then of course, meet regularly with your California Promise Advisor. I do wanna highlight though, this just in the spirit of everything we've talked about today and keep the uniform, this might not be the best route for everybody. Um, you don't have to do this, but it is an opportunity that you can be prepared for as a part of the WOW program, if that's something that interests you. And keep in mind, just because you switch your ADT and let's say you want to minor in um, gender studies or you want to double major, as long as you have one major that you're that lines up with your ADT, right, you still would qualify for the California Promise. So please keep that in mind as well. 
I do want to highlight really quickly uh, Delta College, right? The WOW program at Delta is a little bit different. It's a little bit more unique because um, we support students at the Delta College, the WOW program at least, who want to transfer specifically to the Stockton campus. And because of this, the WOW program at the Delta College only works with these six majors. It's going to be business administration, elementary teacher education, uh, psychology, administration of justice, communication studies, and of course, as a part of the accelerator program, health science as well there. Um, something I do want to highlight that I know our, our Delta College admissions counselor usually highlights at this point is, although you're going to be taking the majority of your classes at the Stockton campus, uh, it doesn't mean you cannot or not are not able to take classes at the Turlock campus as well, okay? So just keep that in mind if this is the route you're going to be going for. Also, fun fact about the Stockton campus, y'all. I don't know if you know this, but parking is free there. I always feel like that's just a tremendous bonus. So, um, so we talked about what the program is, right? But let's talk about the why as in why students should be interested in joining. Um, when we talk about the why, what I really mean is what are the benefits, right, of the program? I think the first one is I've hit on a few times today. It's better understanding of the transfer process and requirements, knowing when to apply knowing what your golden four is, right? Um, what classes you need to take for your major? What happens if you got a D in a class you weren't expecting, you have to retake it? Do you, do you, can you go on with that D, right? We help you kind of understand all this stuff. And the way we do this is we actually give you a dedicated WOW admissions counselor. So for me, I work with all the WOW students at Merced College. Callie works with all of our MJC students and Lydia who isn't here right now, she usually works for all of our Delta students. So the neat thing about the WOW program is that's our only focus. Unlike uh, other admissions counselors or, or college reps, right? Who are there once, twice a month at your campuses. When we're in the face-to-face -face setting, we're actually have an office at your campus four days out of the five weeks we work, right? So Monday through Thursday, we're usually on your campus. Now that we're in the virtual world, it's even better, right? Um, we can Zoom anytime, we can meet, we can text, whatever it is. And something I always tell students is I take the dedicated part of this very serious, right? So if you are working a regular nine to five job, if you have kids at home, if you just can't meet at, at the times that I'm usually available, email me, right? We can meet later on in the day. I'll wake up at 7 a.m. to meet with you or I'll stay late if that's what you need because my goal is just to support you on your educational journey. Once you transfer to Stan State, you also have access to um, a dedicated WOW advisor and some peer mentors as well. We do try to have events and activities hosted by the WOW program. We'll talk about that a little more on our next slide here. And then finally, be familiar with the mission and services of Stan State and have a sense of belonging to the warrior community, right? We really wanna make you feel like a warrior before you're even there. So I know uh, one of the ways we do this, we, we talked and did a presentation with the Warrior Cross Cultural Center yesterday and the Mel Initiative, the Dreamer Center. They highlight a lot of the things they're doing. Well, they actually open up their presentations for the community. But a lot of the times, if you're not a Stan student, Stan State student currently, you don't really hear about it. So we do promote a lot of these opportunities to our WOW students so you can have the opportunity to jump in and hear some of those presentations as well. As a part of the WOW program, there are some exclusive workshops we do. Um, one of the big ones that I think we're going to try to make mandatory going forward is the Cal State Apply Workshop. A lot of students we meet with, we talk with, they have everything they need to transfer. The 60 units, the Golden 4, the 2.0, everything, right? However, when it comes time to do the application, they don't attend one of our workshops. And what happens is you complete the application incorrectly. And although you should be admissible, you get denied because you filled it out incorrectly. So we really want to work with you to put you in the best position to succeed going forward. After our uh, uh, Cal State Apply workshops, we also have What's Next workshops, where we talk about dates and deadlines, right? New student orientation, enrollment deposit confirmation, all this stuff that if you've never done before, uh, and I speak from experience, right? I talk about my thinking about my transfer, can be a little bit overwhelming, right? So we help just kind of create a clear timetable and help you with what comes next. And the cool thing about Zoom, right, um, in my opinion, is there's a lot of times where students are just like, I don't know where to go. We can meet, you can pull up your screen on your end, right, and I can walk you through from what I'm seeing exactly where you need to go. So always keep that in mind. We also have financial aid and scholarship presentations, usually every semester for the students who are about to transfer as well. 
So let's talk about what we expect from the students who do join the WOW program. We do ask that they actually pursue an ADT right and they complete those additional prerequisites for the major as required. We highlight this because sometimes I have found at least at Merced College, there's different electives you can choose to complete your ADT, but there's specific classes that would work best for Stan State, right? So we wanna make sure we're working with you uh, so that you're in the best position to succeed. So you can go as quickly um, as, as you want to when you get to Stan State. We also ask that you meet with us, right? Get to know us so we know what your plan is. Um, when do you plan to transfer? And if anything changes, right? If you fail a class, if you're like, I'm gonna wait, I'm taking a semester off, let us know so we can kind of work together um, to make sure we get you all the information you need when you need it. We ask our students to participate in events and activities hosted by WOW. Going forward, this is gonna be the Cal State Apply uh, workshop, right? Things like that. We also ask that students remain continuously enrolled at the community college. Now, like I said, if something's going on and you need to just drop to one class a semester and you're, but you're, when you're gonna apply is gonna change, just let us know, we can work with you on that front. Um, we're very flexible in what we do and what we can do for you. And then of course, you have to be able to meet all the admission deadlines and requirements. And for those of you who don't know, Stan State is not an impacted campus, right? So what that means is as long as you meet the minimum admission requirements, you're most likely gonna get in. But it's just a matter of knowing what they are and completing them when you're supposed to. So for Stan State, it's 60 transferable units, um, right? You have to have a 2.0 GPA or better. Uh, no 2.0, no go, as simple as that. And then you have to have your golden four completed with the C minus or better. And your golden four, right? It's just going to be your oral communication class or speech, um, your written English composition, your critical thinking, and then, of course, any transferable math. Keep in mind, we will be open for spring 22. So in theory, you could start as soon as January 2022, right? But in order to be eligible for that process, you do need to have these requirements completed by the end of this summer term. Okay, so all 60 transferable units, Golden 4 2.0, completed by the end of this summer term. If you're going to be transferring fall 22, um, these requirements need to be done by the end of spring 22, okay? All the admission requirements need to be done by those deadlines. So just keep that in mind there. By the way, spring 22 students, if that's you, you're thinking about applying, that application will become available August 1st to um, the end of August 31st there. So just keep that in mind. And steps to join the WOW program, it's as easy as one, two, three, right? The first thing we encourage all students to do is actually meet with your community college counselor. Make sure an ADT pathway is appropriate for you. Some of you who might be like me, you were in community college or are in community college for a while, right? Because you're trying to figure it out or you just have a lot of things going on in your life. But because of that, you've taken units from all over the place. So instead of focusing on an ADT and bringing, you know, 90 units to stand state, we sometimes we tell students just transfer as soon as possible and start doing the work once you get to stand state there. Um, but if an ADT is right for you, you can do step number two, which is sign up for the WOW program. It's easy to complete. It's an online sign up form. I'll have Callie put the link uh, for that in the, um, in the chat box below there. But for those of you at home, it can be found at csustan.edu backslash WOW. Once again, that's going to be csustan.edu backslash WOW. That is where the sign up form there is. And then after that, you just have to schedule an appointment with us. We'll meet with you. We'll talk about your plan, what you need to take, uh, what we recommend, um, and we'll go over any questions and concerns you have. And it doesn't just end with that one meeting, right? Once we really get to meet, get to know each other, I tell my students, anytime you're confused about anything Stan State related, um, reach out. Think of us as your liaison to anything Stan State. If you're like, I don't know who to talk to, or you've been trying to call a certain person forever and you're like, can't get a hold of them, reach out to us. Um, we can help get you there and we can really, our goal um, lay down strip is just to mystify the transfer process. We want to get you from point A to point B as easily as possible. So here's our contact information. Uh, if you're a Delta student, right, um, you can always email Lydia Sanchez. She's mostly available for her appointments on Mondays um, just because um, there are some changes going on at Delta, right? Uh, myself and Callie, you can email us. If you're at Merced, it's going to be me. If you're at MJC, it's going to be Callie. And then, of course, our website, it's going to be csustan.edu backslash wow. 
Uh, that is where you can find out, find the sign up form and more information about our program. If you're considering the WOW program or if you have more questions, even if you're watching the recording later on, you can always just email us directly and um, we can go over stuff, right? See if the WOW program is right for you. Uh, and we can talk about the options that might best um, benefit you. So with that being said, uh, if anyone has any questions, I know that was a lot of information, uh, feel free to either drop them in the chat or if you'd like, you can um, unmute yourself and ask as well. We had a question. Um, if, I, if we can't get a hold of our counselor, can we contact you or Miss Zong? Yes, feel free to send us an email. And if you are not able to, um, if you can't reach, you know, your um, community college counselor, the WOW counselor at your community college, send us an email, and then we can we can definitely follow up. Yeah, and. Um... Like Callie said, just send us an email from my Merced College students who may be watching this, right? Um, <laughs> I like sprint to the computer when you guys email me. I'm just excited to help you. I wish I was the same way with, <laughs> with everybody. But um, so if you have anything that you ever need, just reach out and we can definitely help you out, okay? Uh, and so thank you all for joining us. I'll give you one more, 10 more seconds of awkward silence. See if anyone wants to fill it in with a question. And if not, we'll just adjourn the meeting there. All right. Someone could have stand the awkwardness and just left. That's okay. Well, thank you all so much. Um, enjoy your day. Professor Betsy, thank you so much for sharing that wonderful information with us uh, and enjoy this recording, everybody. Bye-bye.